this video, I'm going to take you through how to use the MAMP software package to help you install your WordPress. It's a little bit different from XAMP, but overall the concept is the same. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you've downloaded your WordPress zip. And then you're going to go into your MAMP folder where you installed it and locate htdocs. When you find the htdocs, you're going to want to double click and you're going to want to extract your WordPress folder into the htdocs folder. Now, as a note here, I'm leaving it with the default WordPress name for demonstration. If you wanted to have multiple WordPress sites in a single htdocs, you will need to change this to something a little bit more descriptive. For right now, though, since we're just starting out, we're going to leave it at WordPress. Once you've done that, you can then open MAMP. And then you can choose in the MAMP interface here to open Web Start Page. This is going to open a web page for you that's going to have some information that you'll want to pay attention to. When we are setting up our database, I want to draw your attention here to the host, the port, but more specifically, the user and password, which are both root. We will leave these at the default. However, whenever we make the connection between the database we created and WordPress, you're going to need to remember this username and password. Let's go ahead and make our database. So in MAMP, you're going to go under Tools, and you're going to go to PHP MyAdmin. This will open up the PHP MyAdmin page, where you will be able to see as far as several options and including a list of current databases. Up at the top bar here, the very first tab you should see is Databases. So we're going to go up here, and we're going to create a database. What I'm going to do here is in the database name, I'm going to call this maybe WP for WordPress MAMP Demo. Remember to leave no spaces. Keep everything one word. I'm also going to change as far as the character option, and I'm just going to make this collation. This will give our database a little bit more flexibility as far as the storage and privileges. Go ahead and click Create once you've done this. You should see a couple of things happen. First off, now that you've created the database, the main interface area on the right-hand side has changed where you can go in and you could actually add different elements to the database. We don't need to worry about that right now. WordPress is going to do a lot of that for us. The thing you want to look for, though, is on the left-hand side. In the lists of databases, you should now see the new database that you created. Make a note of this name because you're going to need it for the install process. At this point, we're done in PHP MyAdmin, and we could now navigate over to the WordPress site. Two ways that we can do this. I could make a brand new page and just type in localhost forward slash and the name of the WordPress site folder. In this case, it's WordPress. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to highlight after the forward slash and localhost, and I'm going to type in WordPress. And this is what you should see now. We're now ready to start the setup process. So I'm going to choose my language and tell it to continue. On this next page here, WordPress is just giving you some information about what you'd need. If you remember, I just said as far as you need your database name. And if you remember on the MAMP main page here, if I hop back over, you're going to need this username and password. This is a little different from XAMP. XAMP actually doesn't have a password. XAMP, it's just the username root and then a blank password. So we can go ahead and say, let's go. And now we're ready to start entering in that information we made. So again, the name of the database that you made. In this case, we, I called it WPMAMP demo. Username is root. The password is root. We still want to leave localhost and the table prefix for WordPress the same. To be honest, the table prefixes, you don't really need to change as far as the scope of this course. It makes life a lot easier, and it's something that WordPress recognizes. You're now able to click on Submit, and WordPress is going to think for a second. And what you should see pop up now is that it's ready to run your installation process. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Run, and it's going to ask as far as some information for the site. For demo's sake, what I'll do, and 
is called this like maybe MMC 225 demo site. Now, the username and password that you choose here, you can change at a later point in time. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to just let it make a ver for Dr. D, I'm going to use just a very weak password. Because I'm working locally with WordPress, I'm not too concerned about the password. The only thing you will have to do is confirm the use of a weak password. And then if you want to, let's go ahead and add in our email, ccac.edu. At this point, you can go ahead and say, install WordPress. WordPress is going to think for a second, and then you should get the success, and it's been installed, and then it masks your chosen password, but it shows your username. So now I'm ready to go and log in, so I can change the username to DuPont, Dr. D. If you want to make things easier, since you're working locally, remembering me, is it's okay to click that and I'm gonna go ahead and say log in. And now here you can see your dashboard for WordPress. For future updates and practices, if you want to now, take a note of the URL up at the top here. In my case, it's localhost forward slash WordPress forward slash WP dash admin, WordPress admin. You could just remember this URL and so long as you have MAMP started up or XAMP, and the Apache server in MySQL is set up, you're ready to rock and roll as far as the back end of setting up WordPress.